I spend a lot of my time illustrating buildings and because I like the style, most of those buildings tend to be English countryside cottages. Over the last couple of years, I've found a lot of people seem to like my style of painting. So I thought I'd spend a day teaching you how I go about painting my cottages. Firstly, the setup. Here's what you'll need to get started. Of course, you'll need watercolor paper. I'll be using a small five by five inch cutout of my Winslow cold pressed watercolor paper. A pencil, 2H or HB is fine, I'm just using a standard HB pencil. A waterproof ink of some variety, I always use the Pigma Microns and will be swapping between sizes 03, 01 and 005. If we're doing a watercolour painting, you're going to need some paints, so I mainly use the Cotman series from Windsor and Newton, but I will be using a couple of Daniel Smith watercolours as well. And watercolour brushes, I'm just using two standard round edged brushes. Oh, and don't forget water too, and a cup of tea, and a biscuit. Okay, time to get started. So once you've spent an hour or so scrolling through Pinterest to try and find the perfect cottage, it's time to start sketching the building and background. Now, I've said it before, but I'll say it again. This is one of the most important stages of any painting. I know it's obvious, but at this point, you are laying down the foundations for how your painting is going to look. So if you're not happy with how your pencil lines are looking now, don't expect the painted lines to be any better. So when you're sketching in pencil, make sure that you have all your vertical lines parallel with one another, all your horizontal lines parallel with one another, etc. So the house that I chose to paint is a house in the Lake District called Yew Tree Farm Cottage. It was once owned by Beatrix Potter, but I think it's still a working farm. So fun fact about the house. Anyway, moving on to what I'm talking about with making sure all the lines are correct in the pencil drawing. When I say we need all the horizontal lines to be parallel, I'm talking about making sure that the corners of each wall are parallel with one another. So we've got a wall going straight down here on the left of the building. Then there's a slight bit of building that's outcropping from the main cottage. That corner's going directly down, so is this one. So they're all in parallel with one another. This one is also in parallel. I hope the camera shows this properly. And same with this one as well. So all of our downstrokes of the pencil are all parallel. And you can also see this in the window frames as well as the door frames. And of course I can go on. The horizontal lines are equally parallel with one another. So. I mean, it's a little bit out, but each line of the window frames going across at the top of the window frame and at the bottom are parallel with the roof, which is parallel with the top of the roof, which is parallel with the ground and the roof over here. The hardest part that I've always found and the bit that you need to concentrate is when you've got the roof on an angle. So we're looking at so if you look at the original picture, we're looking at it from a side on perspective. You can see part of the side of the building here, but of course you can't see the other side here. So we need to represent that. So that all comes down to making sure that we get the right angle here and completely co copying the angle of that line here as well. And if you manage to pull that off, then the perspective usually ends up looking okay. We're also going to add any extra details in pencil too, such as trees or bushes, brickwork, doors and windows, and anything else that you can see in the image. You can add extra things in ink, but if you are just getting started, I'd try to get everything down in pencil so you know exactly how it's going to look when you do lay the ink down. Once I'm happy with the pencil sketch, it's time to start bringing it to life with ink. So we'll draw over the pencil with a light line of ink. Usually I'll only be using a nib size of 005 at this point because you can always darken it in the future, but you can't lighten it in the future. So it's better to put less and then add more later on. Depending on how I'm feeling, I also may add some shadowing details in the form of ink lines. So looking at the inked drawing, I can usually see what lines may need darkening up because they're close to a shadow or they are a foundational part of the building, such as walls or guttering, or even where the ground touches the building. That's usually a place where I will darken the lines slightly. But I will also leave some areas with only light ink. And this is especially done around the windows or door frames or roof tiles. Unless you really want them to stand out, I usually let them blur into the walls of the building. I'm pretty happy with how this is looking at the moment. So as you can see, I've added a few random little details. So I've done my shadowing in places where it is darker. Let me use a pencil so you can actually see where I'm pointing at. So um, just underneath the guttering, there's always a dark 
line going across there so I've just sort of put in some crisscross lines same with this like little garage or little shed um, just coming off the house if you look at the original picture just basically where the light reflection is there there is a little house and it looks like it's empty on the inside it's all black so um, I could have gone a bit darker with the ink but I'll just leave it there for now because I can always darken it up later um, same with around the door frame as well that's a dark area and underneath these plants as well I may need to darken them up further but there's always a shadowing underneath plants I could have um, added tiles to the whole roof but the thing is is that once you've added the tiles with pen you can't remove them at all so it's a risky sort of business so I've just sort of left it very light and airy at the moment and I'm trying to represent what the original picture is even though it is a dark grey roof the overall image is still very light and airy and so I didn't want to have a really dark contrasted roof and then a white house so we'll leave that for now but like I said you can always add ink in the future but you just can't take it away so it's better to be safe than sorry when it comes to this um, and I've also added just a random little bits of spatterings of details of the walls as well So all that is just an aside um, What I actually wanted to talk about is how I'm going to go about painting it So the wall of the building is white with just a bit of shadow So we're not really going to be painting very much white at all We're going to try and keep it light and maybe just add some grey around here to actually add some details But that's about it Same with the roof, we're going to start very light and slowly get darker but some areas will be left pretty much how they started off with, with the paper shining through. So you can see there's a white part here. I'll be leaving that. This whole circle area here is quite light. So that may only have one or two washes and that will be done. Whereas these parts over here are a bit darker. So um, they may have three or four washes and they'll be done. So that's what we're going to work on. We're going to start very, very light and build it up over time. So patience is key here. Now for watercolor. This is the part that I enjoy most, but it's also the part where I can find myself getting frustrated or impatient really, really easily. So if you're like me, we've got to keep an eye on that. So we're going to add very light washes of watercolor and build up that watercolor in the darker areas of the painting over time. So this is where it pays to take time in between washes and reassess how the painting is going. Because we're wanting to create contrast, every wash is getting slightly darker towards the edges of the building where the shadows are, and doing this really helps to add detail to the illustration. At this stage I also tend to splash more pigmented washes randomly around the face of the building or the roof, and this helps me better represent bricks or tiles. And we can also do this on the trees and bushes to help show darker areas and shadows from leaves or branches.
Okay, so once all the watercolor is complete, I will sometimes go back over a few of the lines with my ink again, or even add a few extra details in the way of hinting at bricks or cracks that could be in the building. But apart from that, I take a step back from the painting and have a look at it through fresh eyes. And if I'm happy with all the details that I've included, then I consider it complete. The only extra thing I need to add is always remember to sign your work as well. And I'm saying that more for myself because I always forget and it's super important important if you're sharing online and especially if you're selling your artwork as well. And that is it. So hopefully you enjoyed this tutorial and it was helpful in one way or another. Let me know if you'd be interested in seeing more tutorials of my art style and artwork. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again in another video. Bye!